There are alternatives to warfarin, and including warfarin, there are really four oral anticoagulants that are improved in various places in the world at the moment. And we'll probably, in fact, all four of them will be available in Australia in some way or another uh, in the coming year. The real burning issue here is that the anticoagulants, the oral tablets to thin the blood, are underused. And so we want to see more use of these drugs in general. All four drugs are somewhat different and may be more or less suitable for individuals according to what health issues you have, age and various other things. So warfarin has some inconvenience, inconvenience to it. You, you, do, you have to do regular blood tests, but the good thing is you can do regular blood tests to indicate how therapeutic it is and how safe it is. None of the neural agents are reversible at this stage, and by that I mean, although they can, if you're bleeding, they can eventually wear off, which may take hours or days, there's no antidote to that bleeding. Whereas for warfarin, you can reverse it within an hour or two in an emergency setting. And that might be seen as an important issue in patients who are scared of bleeding and what might happen, and also in the setting of people who may be more prone to bleeding. So that's actually a very big difference. Warfarin is once a day. Two of the newer agents are twice a day each. Some of them can't be used in dose set boxes if you've got a you know, Webster pack or some other device that helps you remember to take your medication. And also, they, as I say, they have advantages and disadvantages. Not all of them are better than warfarin, although some of them have been marketed as such. Warfarin is actually a very good drug and the absolute differences in terms of bleeding and thera therapeutic benefit and things is very small between all of them. Having said that, uh, Dabigatrin uh, is perhaps not well suited to patients with kidney disease, whereas you'd prefer to use warfarin in that instance. The issue here is using the right drug for the right person. And there are real differences between them in terms of being suited to you or not suited to you, which need to be considered quite thoughtfully, sometimes perhaps by a specialist, in fact, because some of the differences are complicated. One very important point to make, though, is if you've been stable on warfarin, if you've been taking it for a while and you haven't had bleeding, and your INR is mostly between two and three, you should not change the newer agents. The bleeding types that you get on the newer agents are actually different to warfarin. So if you haven't been bleeding on warfarin, you could start one of the newer agents and actually get bleeding from a new location and in fact have a higher bleeding risk in the next two months than you would have had if you'd been on the warfarin. And that's actually quite important. So if you're stable on warfarin, and lots of people are stable on warfarin in Australia, the management by general practitioners of INR and warfarin is actually very good. The only problem we have is they don't use it often enough. They use it very well, but not often enough. And if you change to the newer agent, you are exposing yourself to a new set of side effects, which is unnecessary. Otherwise, if you're starting out, there needs to be a detailed discussion about what medication meets your needs. Because warfarin is reversible, and the only one that is reversible, that might be a very important point. Because your doctor may be concerned about all sorts of issues, about whether you're actually having your blood, your blood correctly thinned, the fact you can have an INR test for the warfarin may be an advantage. And warfarin, although people call it rat sack and all sorts of things, is otherwise a very safe drug. And in those people with a lot of medical conditions, on a lot of medication, and with some problems with their kidney, for example, those patients are probably safer on warfarin than they are on some of the newer agents. So it's very important that the decision about these medications be made sensibly. The new drugs are not miracle drugs compared with warfarin. They give us new options. They are certainly more convenient, and that's obviously valuable. But for a lot of patients, they may not be the best choice.